What kind of monsters inhabited the Earth's oceans before the appearance of mankind? I am sure that the answer will include Megalodon, a giant shark, and the more ancient monsters, the Plesiosaurus and their allies. Hello, everyone! Of course, all of that is true, but there are more fossils of aquatic monsters than that. Welcome to our channel, everyone! Today, we are going to show you some of the creatures that lived in the sea long before humans, Megalodon, and Plesiosaurus showed up. Let's get started! Titan Ichthys The period from the famous Cambrian explosion, when large numbers of creatures appeared in the sea, to the Permian extinction, which left a niche open for dinosaurs, is called by scholars the Paleozoic Era. The Paleozoic Era consists of six geologic periods, with an overall duration of less than 300 million years. During the first half of the Paleozoic, Highly developed, multicellular organisms lived only in the sea, first topped by giant invertebrates and then followed by equally giant fish. Most of the protagonists of today's video lived during that Paleozoic era. Titanichthys was also a Paleozoic fish. Titanichthys lived during the Late Devonian period, about 360 million years ago, in the deep waters of the Northern Hemisphere. The size of Titanichthys was imposing, with some species reaching 7.5 meters in length, perhaps even larger. This monstrous fish belonged to the so-called placoderm, or placodermy, and was covered from head to tail with a thick armor. They also had huge mouths and used their powerful fins to move around. Although terrifying to look at, this late Devonian tank apparently occupied a niche for baleen whales, not sharks. In other words, they fed on plankton filtered from the water rather than larger prey. However, if you were to travel back in time to the Devonian, I would not recommend playing with Titanichthys. A blow from the tail or fin of a Titanichthys could be deadly. Besides, like other creatures of its time, Titanichthys was not very smart and would have reacted to everything it did not understand as a potential threat, and could have attacked preemptively. In other words, it is best to stay away from such creatures. Dinictus We will introduce another type of monster fish from the Devonian period. It is a giant fish called Dinictus. It was several meters long and covered with armor. Its fossils have been found in the U.S. state of Ohio, which was at the bottom of the ocean at the time, but the habitat of this monstrous fish may have been more extensive. Unlike Titanichthys, Dinictus preyed on much larger prey. Scholars believe that Dinictus was an apex predator, meaning that it was at the top of the food chain of the biotic community to which this monster fish belonged. Perhaps Dinictus's powerful jaws could have chewed through the armor of Titanichthys or any other placoderm fish. Dinictus and a few other large predators belonged to the Arthrodira, an order of Placodermi that I have already mentioned. Nothing could compete with these Arthrodirus fishes, and these predators terrorized the seas of the Devonian period. Heterosteus while Dinictus was the exclusive ruler of the Devonian seas in the Western Hemisphere, the king of the Eastern Hemisphere was its relative Heterosteus, which also belonged to the Arthrodira. Heterosteus fossils were first found in Estonia, but have since been discovered by researchers in other places, including Germany, the Svalbard Islands, and Greenland. Heterosteus was over 6 meters long, and its armored body was over 1 meter wide. What is interesting is that the first discoverers of Heterosteus had classified the fish as a turtle because of its armored body, and it was not until later that researchers finally learned the truth. This tank of primitive ichthyosaurs could catch up to any prey and chew it up with its powerful jaws. Also, the blows delivered by its tail and fins must have been supremely dangerous. Only sharks were able to hold their own against the Arthrodirus fishes, which were soon overtaken at the top of the food chain by sharks. The Devonian 
followed by the Carboniferous era, was the golden age of sharks, but the Arthrodirus fishes were nearly extinct. However, sharks were able to gain the upper hand because they were fast swimmers and could catch up to their prey faster than Heterosteus and Dinectus, meaning that they effectively starved their rivals to death by taking away their food base. In a fair fight, the Arthrodirus fishes could have defeated the shark. It is not so easy to bite through such armors. Masonia. In 1938, Marjorie Latimer, a curator of a museum in the city of East London, South Africa, found an unusual fish among those landed by fishermen. Researchers examined the fish and were shocked. It was a fish which belonged to the coelacanthiforms, a species long thought to be extinct. This fish was named Latimeria and is now considered one of the oldest species of fish still alive and is considered a living fossil. Today's Latimeria is a fairly large fish, growing up to 2 meters in length. However, compared to some of its prehistoric aquatic relatives, Latimeria is only a small fish. For example, Masonia, which lived 100 million years ago during the Middle Cretaceous, could grow up to 6 meters in length. Unlike modern Latimeria, which live in deep water, Masonia preferred freshwater or slightly brackish waters such as estuaries and large lakes. According to some accounts, Masonia did not chew their prey, but rather gulped it down. This is not a very happy ending for a creature that was unlucky enough to encounter a hungry Masonia. Cretoxyrhina. The Cretaceous period had a short gap period that lasted about 20 million years. At that time, Plesiosaurus, the large, short-necked species of Plesiosauria, were nearly extinct. In their place came the giant Mosasaurus, but at that time, they were not so numerous and not yet large enough to become a giant species like the Tylosaurus. During this gap period, which lasted about 20 million years, giant sharks such as Leptostyrax, Cardabiodon, and Cretoxyrhina dominated the oceans. Some Cretoxyrhina reached 8 to 9 meters in size. Researchers have found fossils of this fish all over the planet, with known fossils found in Kansas, Kazakhstan, the Volga River Basin, and Australia. Because of this wide range of locations where Cretoxyrhina was found, paleontologists around the world did not immediately realize that if not all the fossils were of the same type of fish, they were at least closely related species of the same genus. Cretoxyrhina boasted very large, strong, sharp teeth, which were not well suited for biting prey. Thus, many believe that Cretoxyrhina preferred to swallow its prey whole, but there were exceptions. Cretoxyrhina's prey included turtles, other fish, and underwater reptiles. In other words, almost all marine life, including some quite large ones. Dunkleosteus. Then I would like to conclude today's feature with a fish that, with the exception of the megalodon, is arguably the largest and most dangerous of its kind in this category. It was a fish called Dunkleosteus, a fearsome presence in the Devonian Sea. This fish also belonged to the Arthrodira that you all already know. Researchers cannot answer for certain how big Dunkleosteus was when it grew up. There are known specimens that are 10 meters long, but some researchers speculate that it is still not the largest individual and that, theoretically, Dunkleosteus could have been 20 meters or more in size. If so, this would mean that Dunkleosteus was once one of the largest marine creatures that ever lived on Earth. The Dunkleosteus bite may have been stronger than that of modern crocodiles, its body protected from foreign enemies by its strong armor. And although its speed was no match for the graceful sharks, its huge fins allowed it to pursue its prey at considerable speed. Dunkleosteus lived mainly in the Northern Hemisphere, and its fossils are often found in the United States and Europe. However, in reality, Dunkleosteus may have been found everywhere. Now, we are almost at the end of this video. Thank you all for watching. I hope you liked it. If you did, please give this video a high rating. 
the number of high ratings will give us an idea of your interest and help us choose a theme for a new video. That's it for now. Goodbye for a while. See you again soon. Bye.